This is the twelfth video for the Ethics and Legal Considerations part of the Animal Chiropractic class. And for this video, we're going to start with the exciting topic of record keeping. Now, I know that nobody goes to veterinary school or to chiropractic school because they want to spend their time keeping records. But I also think it's a very important task uh, because I think it's a critical task, not just in connection with lawsuits, but for other reasons. I think it's helpful to spend a little bit of time talking about record keeping. I also think it's helpful that the veterinarians and the chiropractors who are working together both have the same understanding or same expectations in connection with their record keeping. Having said that, I, I expect that all of you are already familiar with record keeping and that most of these rules are pretty common sense. So I expect to go through them fairly quickly. Um, first thing to think about in connection with record keeping that I think is, is helpful is to remember why we keep those records. I think most doctors, if asked why we keep patient files, will we'll tell you we do it to protect ourselves from lawsuits. And that's the main reason for keeping those records. Now, although that's a nice side effect of keeping records, I think the main reason for keeping records is to provide good care for your patients. Part of the value of the records is to help refresh your memory, help remind the doctor uh, what they've done, what's worked, how the patient responded, um, any concerns the client expressed so that the doctor can be aware of those and provide better care for the patient. It's also important because sometimes the uh, doctor who started the treatment plan may need to step aside and someone else may take over the treatment plan. And in that situation, those other doctors and those other staff members can use the records to see where, where they were in taking care of the patient and continue the care with as little disruption as possible. Now, in connection with human patients, it's also important to keep good records, accurate records, uh, so that you can be paid by insurance companies. Now, there is some pet insurance out there, but I don't think it's very prevalent as we sit here today. But certainly if it becomes prevalent, uh, that can be a, a key part or key reason for keeping record keeping. Now, in context of uh, animal chiropractic, I want to talk about one other benefit of record keeping. As an animal chiropractor trying to build a practice, one of the ways to show that you are a good, thorough, well-trained doctor is to keep records that show your thoroughness, records that are accurate and complete and thorough, uh, and to share those records with the veterinarians who might be referring cases to you. It can show those veterinarians that they can trust you, and it may help them uh, uh, learn sooner that you may, ne may not need as much supervision as someone else might need. Uh, general rules for the records, the, the records are owned by the facility or the doctor who creates them. They should usually keep the original records except in extraordinary circumstances. Uh, if copies are requested by the patient or with the patient's authorization, the office should release copies. Um, something else to think about is when the practice closes or is sold, some arrangement needs to be made, made for the possession of the records and continuing to have them available for the clients for the period of time required by the statutes. Uh, I think patient progress notes are an important part of your records. Uh, many times with chiropractic care, a patient may respond very dramatically at first, but over time that response may be lesser, or the patient may plateau, or may actually regress. Uh, if you don't have progress notes showing that the patient was improving, the client will forget about all those improvements and focus only on the regression uh, that may be occurring at the moment. Uh, dictated but not read is all the time I've really seen that used is by medical doctors and it's kind of an excuse for uh, 
errors, sloppiness, poor grammar. Uh, and, and even though it's an excuse, uh, nobody believes it. It makes the professional look very careless and it's not an effective, it's not a good way to communicate. I do not recommend that you mark anything dictated but not read. Take the time to proofread things before they leave your office. Uh, Sign-in sheets are appropriate. Uh, I know in HIPAA there was some concern about whether they could be used, but the nice thing about a sign-in sheet is if you have clients signing in to show that they arrived, <coughs> uh, that sign-in sheet has the writing of a number of different people on it, which makes it almost impossible to forge a sign-in sheet. If there's ever a d disagreement about whether a patient or a client came in on a particular day, that sign-in sheet can be a very good way to disprove that. Um, the next few slides we're going to go through, I'm going to talk about the general rules of record keeping. Uh, now, generally, these are rules that exist in the context of paper records. Now, I think as veterinary practices, just like everything else, moves more and more towards computers. Some of these rules aren't going to make too much sense. But as you move towards computers, you want to use software that's going to accomplish these same goals. So this first group of rules, uh, first five rules here, do not erase, don't use correction fluid, that's white out, uh, don't use adhesive labels to cover up mistakes, and keep your records in ink. Those are all designed to prevent the doctor from covering up their mistakes. If you need to make a correction, you make it in an appropriate manner, and we'll discuss that in a minute here. But don't try to hide that a mistake was made. Don't try to hide the incorrect information that was put in the patient's file. That transparency makes your records that much more credible. Uh, this next group, the remaining rules on this slide, all have to do with not adding things later. Okay, don't skip lines, don't leave spaces, don't squeeze in notes in the margins or between lines, don't indent where you can try to squeeze information in later, and if you have a blank space at the end of a line, just draw a line through that blank space so you can't use it again later. Now, the benefit of that, these rules is, is as you create the records, you are going to date what date the entry is being created and that's going to be more credible because it, there's no opportunity for you to go back and add information after the fact. So those rules are all helpful and if you, again if you're going to some kind of software solution make sure the software creates an audit trail that's going to identify who has made changes to the records and exactly what changes they have made and when those changes were made. 